I am not your equal partner in this game. So no, I shall continue on my path. But adapting may not be enough. Just know there is only one way you do not lose her. And if I refuse to join your side, there will always be enemies waiting for you. Should have chosen a side, Witcher. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Toss a coin to your Witcher. The first half of season three just released. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. I know you have a ton of questions about what's going on with part two of the episodes in Henry Cavill leaving Liam Hemsworth taking over the role in season four. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos and careful for spoilers from the first half of season three. This video will cover everything through episode five. There are eight episodes total. The final three episodes will release at the end of July, and then it'll be like another year or so for season four. Remains to be seen whether or not they end on a teaser for Liam Hemsworth or if they'll just wait to the beginning of season four before they reveal his face looks like Liam Hemsworth. Season three is based mostly on the events of the Time of Contempt book, which is just the next book in the Witcher series. Season two adapted Blood of Elves. Then for season four, they'll probably do Baptism of Fire, which is just the next book after Time of Contempt. In fact, during the first few episodes, Geralt and the other characters literally say the title like they go full Family Guy meme saying the name of the thing in the thing. A time of contempt is approaching. I will not pay for what I love by having contempt for myself. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! What that speech meant is that Geralt won't have contempt for himself by letting Ciri die so that he can live. It's the whole idea that neutrality will get you nowhere, which Dijkstra references at the end of episode 5 when he makes like he's about to kill him. If you want to protect what you love, join our side in the battle to come. The child will not remain safe for long in your passivity will be no weapon with which to save her. Early on, they suggested that giving Ciri up in exchange for his clemency would help Geralt live, and he refuses to do that, which ultimately is probably going to wind up getting him injured so badly that it messes him up to the point that his face changes into Liam Hemsworth's face. The idea being that had he given her up, he'd still be fine, but he'd become full of contempt for himself. So he's just saying early on that he would die to protect Ciri because he's kind of like her surrogate father. And during the episodes, they also reference Yennefer being the surrogate mother to Ciri. To say it literally tells her, oh, you finally got what you always wanted. You became a mother. Technically, she wanted to be able to biologically have a child and she had to give that up to become a mage. But the whole idea with the Witcher series is that Geralt and Yennefer are like Ciri's parents, basically. Just to address the whole recasting with Liam Hemsworth, since the writers and producers just came out and said that they're going to try and make the transition between Henry Cavill and Liam Hemsworth as close to logical and canon as possible, if you could even do that, they want it to make sense that his face just completely changes and none of the other characters think that it's weird. What will probably wind up happening, just early theory, is that there'll be a battle between Henry Cavill's version of Geralt at the end of season three with Vilgefortz, who they finally reveal in episode five is the true villain they've been searching for this whole time, or at least for the moment he is the main villain. They're still worried about Nilfgaard, Ciri's father, Emperor Amir, the elves who also want Ciri's power, even the Redanians want Ciri. Pretty much everybody, every faction on the show wants Ciri for themselves, but for right now, Vilgefortz is the worst of them all. In the books, Geralt has a huge fight with Vilgefortz, who messes him up really bad, like Geralt gets messed up big time. This mage, whoever it is, is very dangerous. And if I refuse to join your side. What the show will probably do, early theory, is just say that the process of healing Geralt's wounds in the magic used to fix his body is what causes him to start looking like Liam Hemsworth. If it wasn't clear during the first half of the episodes, Reince was who they were worried about, at least at first. He was the one that had been coming after them this whole time, but they learned that Reince was working for a more powerful mage, and by the events of episode 5, they incorrectly assumed that it was Stregobor. Because he's kind of an asshole to begin with, and he was trying to get rid of all the students at Aratuza in the Brotherhood of Mages that had elven blood, even though technically that would potentially make them more powerful. Like Yennefer is also part elf, it makes her more powerful than the other mages, but she doesn't have quite as much elven blood or DNA in her as Ciri does. Earlier in the season, Geralt found a bunch of missing girls from Aratuza who had been experimented on by a powerful mage who they couldn't identify in a female mage with a weird voice. They found all those girls' belongings inside Stregobor's office, as well as the Book of Monoliths, which was the book that Avalak had at the end of the Blood Origin prequel series that told people how to use the monoliths to transport through time and space. 
The monolith gave the elves the ability to teleport across the multiverse, even though most elves hadn't figured out how to use them to do that. They mostly used them to transport things across the planet, but a more powerful magic user could use them to transport across universes, and someone who's even more powerful, like Siri, can use their power to transport things across time and space, like literally time travel. You thought The Witcher was a fantasy sword and sandals series. No, it's a sci-fi series. The Witcher Into the Multiverse of Madness. The Book of Monoliths just has all the ancient knowledge about how the magic works and how you use the monoliths. So anybody that got a hold of it would be really dangerous. Even at the end of season two, Siri activates one of the monoliths, opening a portal to the other world where the wild hunt comes from. Really what wound up happening though is that it was Vilgefortz who planted all that evidence in Stregobor's office to throw off suspicion of him. The female mage that had been experimenting on all the girls that the survivor spoke of was Lydia, who they revealed was in love with Vilgefortz and just did whatever he told her to do. He'd been manipulating her to his own ends, just like he's doing with Tissaia, who's also his lover. So Vilgefortz been pretty busy, getting pretty down and dirty with the mages. Now in the background, they had this whole storyline with the Brotherhood of Mages also being worried about an attack from Nilfgaard because Emperor Mir doesn't care about mages. He wants to get rid of them just in general. They're also worried about attacks from other countries as well. That fight basically breaks out right at the end of episode 5. Geralt and Yennefer finally connect the dots that it was Vilgefortz the whole time. It was Agatha all along play the theme song. But they still haven't quite figured out that he's also turned to Seiya to his side. If she seemed kind of sus in the last couple of episodes when Yennefer starts talking about Ciri, that's because she'd been working with Vilgefortz as well. Like she'd turned to his side. But at the end of episode 5, they haven't figured that out yet. Yennefer still thinks that Tissae is in danger, but she's in no danger. Don't worry. While that's happening, Geralt goes to kill Vilgefortz, but he's stopped because of the assault that's happening inside Aratuza, and then by Dijkstra, who says that he should have chosen a side, making it seem like he's about to kill him. When we know he's coming back for the rest of the season, like there's three more episodes, we know Geralt's going to be around for these three more episodes. So obviously he's going to be fine. It's mostly meant to be a reminder that Dijkstra wants Ciri, thus wants Geralt's loyalty, and right now he's the lesser of two evils, which is a reference back to season one, the lesser evil. The whole idea with the Witcher series just in general is that there's no one main villain outside of say like the White Frost, maybe. Everyone's meant to be just different levels of terrible, and it's meant to be very morally gray. Geralt and Yennefer spent a lot of season three trying to teach that lesson to Ciri. Sometimes you just gotta let people die. Most of the first half of the season was just set up for the big Geralt versus Vilgefortz battle that they'll do in the second part of the episodes and learning how Vilgefortz is connected to Nilfgaard and Emperor Mir. They haven't really gotten into Vilgefortz's backstory on the show that much yet, but Vilgefortz started working for Emperor Mir long before he started his war to unite the continent, when he was still calling himself Dooney, even when he was still in hiding before he got rid of the Pretender, which he references in the earlier episodes about reclaiming his throne. So this whole time on the show, since before season one started, Vilgefortz has been in league with Emperor Amir because Vilgefortz wants to take Ciri's power for himself. Sort of like what was happening with Baylor during the Blood Origin series, trying to bargain with the White Frost for more powerful magic. Like they just want more power. I'll get into the White Frost in a second because they don't spend a whole lot of time during the first half of season three referencing the White Frost, even though technically it's supposed to be the biggest villain on the show just in general. They do reference the Wild Hunt briefly, which almost tries to grab Siri, but it's like a very brief moment. So we'll see them come back in the second half of the season. Remember though, within the universe of the show, the Wild Hunt ultimately serves the White Frost, making the White Frost the bigger villain. But the whole idea is that Vilgefortz is just using Emperor Amir to get Ciri. The Emperor is just using Vilgefortz to his own end to get Ciri for himself, not to protect her like a father, but because he wants to use her power to help him unite the continent under his iron fist. That's really what he's worried about. So both of them are kind of playing each other. Getting into the whole idea of Ciri's power and the White Frost. Every time this first half of the season, they keep referencing the idea of controlling chaos, like Yennefer mentions that several times. They're talking about chaos magic, as in just magic in general, which sounds kind of like a Marvel Scarlet Witch reference because she also uses chaos magic. But the idea is that the White Frost uses chaos magic as well, like the more powerful version of magic. And it seems like they've changed the backstory of the White Frost from the TV show and the books and the games. And on the show, they're trying to say that it's an actual person just pretending to be the White Frost. They speak with a normal voice, making them sound just like another time traveler, like Siri has power enough to time travel through portals. Or maybe it's just another mage who, in their quest for more power, more chaos magic, lost their physical body, and they're trying to conquer different universes one at a time to gain even more power. 
So I think what they're trying to say on the show is that the White Frost will ultimately try to use Ciri's power to come to the main Witcher universe, conquer it next, and then just move on to the next universe after that. But that's like Witcher Endgame, like Witcher Season 5, however many seasons they wind up going. We'll see how long that lasts. The difference in the books and the video games is that they make it seem like the White Frost is more of an ice age, like a force of nature that the elves are trying to stop. And that's why they created the Elder Blood program that Ciri now has. Originally, thousands of years ago, they wanted to create a being that was so powerful they could stop the coming Ice Age. But the TV show is saying it's more like an actual person who's going to show up Thanos style and just use all their resources and magic until the planet dies and then move on to the next planet in another universe. Post all your theories in the comments like how do you think they've changed the White Frost plot like this overarching plot with all the different characters on the TV show. For those of you asking what was going on with Robbie Amell guest starring during season three like what is Robbie Amell doing here? Did you get lost somewhere? He was playing Gallatin, the leader of another force of elves that had allied with Emperor Mir in exchange for money and clemency. He didn't care anything about Francesca's loftier goals for all of elven kind or anything about Ciri. He just wanted to lead the elves and thought that he could do a better job than Francesca. The reason why the Emperor had Cahir kill him to prove his loyalty was because he felt like ultimately if he were to take over the elves, the elves would become a much bigger problem for the Emperor long term. So he was killing two birds with one stone, so to speak, like getting K here back on the team and also getting rid of a potential future threat. Big reminder, though, the second half of the episodes released in July and reminder that Henry Cavill, as much as it sucks that he's leaving the show, he's going to actually do a big Warhammer series and Warhammer movies at Amazon. I've already done a big trailer video for that. You can click here to learn about that and click here for all my Secret Invasion episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. Toss a coin to your Witcher.